Goeiemorgen jylle super gemazing mense I hope you guys are doing great this morning Man I'm sitting here now thinking now uh, My very message of yesterday Teach me now in this moment of, of Just as I'm about to start of our, Probably every message that anyone gives You know it, it's directed at being weary of the evil and the bad stuff in the world and in the spiritual realm and the stuff that affects us, that attacks us, is trying to keep us away from God. And that that very same message also has a good side, a godly side, a great side. And here's what I mean is that evil things will reveal themselves when God brings them into the light. That's why we've got to stay close to God in everything that we do. And speaking of everything that we do, if messages, I mean, I, I from time to time often have messages that hang in my mind that I just don't speak yet in the morning. Because there's, I don't know, I feel that's how God leads me. Something, some another message would overcrowd it or something of the sort. And then I'll get one, like I'm getting to this morning, that has been hanging in my mind and it comes around and it comes around and it comes around. But every time it feels God reveals a little bit more and how, and this is the first time of a morning message that, happen, that, that this happens to or that this is coming, that... Um, but, but yeah, and how he adds to it every single time. And then he just, okay, it's time. Let's, let's do this. Goeiemorgen. So I've lived a life. And I'm sure there's, there's many of you that can probably relate to that. Of living a life of, filled with people who kept telling you what you can't do. I've had, I've had a few around me some foreverness, <laughs> if I can say that, that have told me, of, of course, what I can do. Three of those many, of well, three of those few people happen to be my mom, my dad, and my sister. And words that are engraved in my mind, specifically from my mom. Yes, I was a mom's boy. I love my dad and, and my mom and my sister. There's no difference to the levels. But I'm a mommy's boy. I was a mommy's boy. But I'm also a daddy's boy. And I'm also a sister's brother. But my mom's words that, that stick to my mind was also was has always been my son. If you put your mind to it, you can do anything you want. And I understood at the time, but it's only years and years after that I realized I understood, but I never really understood. Because putting your mind to it has more than just thinking of it meaning. It means making a decision to do something. It means making up your mind, not just the decision. There's a difference between, for me between making a decision and making up your mind. Because making up your mind is almost immediately followed by action in my case. And then you do it. That is putting your mind to a task, as in making sure and learning how to do it, picking up an instrument, starting to sprint, picking up a cricket bat, picking up any ball, any sport, any document, opening up a web page for training, whatever it is that you decided and made your mind up to do, starting to action that, get some certifications behind your name, whatever the case. And you know, it's interesting how because of those that have been around me, we have a tendency to listen to the negative and I actually want to call it evil things so often and so easily. We eat it up, man. It tends to be so easy to start doubting ourselves and I still try to figure out why in life often. Because God tells us all these great many things and that's the only voice we should be listening to. Even the, uh, Paul writes when he writes in 1 Corinthians 15, he says, Do not be deceived because evil company corrupts good habits. One of the translations I know says good morals. Evil company corrupts good morals. And it's, it's important to realize this because we are meant to be the coffee in the room. Because coffee changes our water looks. It changes the whole environment. You can be tea as well if you'd like. They do the same. <laughs> but I feel tea is con contained, it's in a baggie, <laughs> where coffee is just, you know. <laughs> we are meant to change the world, we are meant to shake the world, we are meant to be world shakers. But in certain instances, and, and I can talk about areas of my own life, there's areas you just don't affect yet, or I affect enough yet, and 
however, those people are have a tendency to affect me in ways that I don't like. And that's that's not calling them evil or bad or condemned or anything of that sort. It just tends to be bad company because they haven't been touched by the Lord like they should have yet. And you can hang there if you'd like to, but I feel like if I feel myself getting affected by this in ways that I don't want to in terms of speech, if I all of a sudden start swearing more, I've got to pay attention to who I'm around. If I start, whatever, if I start drinking again, perhaps, I've got to pay attention where I am and who I'm around. Not that that's going to happen, but, you know, that's the sort of things that we need to be careful of. You know, in verse 34 of 1 Corinthians 15, Paul says, Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. You know, and that's speaking to the Oaks who have not been touched by God really enough yet or at the right way yet. One word from God can change everybody's life. You know, and... Um, well, and what he writes here is, as, as well, is, I speak this to your shame. This jumped out of me this morning because I'm not sure if this means, well, for me, let me explain what this hit me as this morning. Is that speaking to my shame means that if the people do not have the knowledge of God, am I sharing the knowledge of God? And he's speaking to my shame with the fact that they don't know because I don't say anything. That's, that's what, what jumped out of me in this verse this morning. But as long as we keep our eyes on Jesus, on our knees in front of God, taking all our decisions to the Lord, you know, Matthew 6 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And don't worry about tomorrow. Remember we said God's plan, is the, God's job is the planning. And He does this. His, his job is the planning. Our job is the actioning, the preparing. And... Even Philippians tells us that we call, can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But those all things, for me, added to the shame part. Can do all things. I can speak to those people. I can do the thing God told me to do. And, you know, you have to consult God with the decisions that you need to make. The things that you need to do. You have to go to Him. You have to... That's how we remain in God's will. You can't, you can't follow His path if He's not part of the path. <laughs> and, uh, you know... You know, it's it's really on other levels. Get the right people around you. Listen to wise counsel. They're also there for a reason. Remember, God is the only one who can reveal your path and your calling and your things to you. He's the only one because He will always speak to you first. He will use a lot of people around you to confirm, yes. But also you need to learn to discern from the Holy Spirit because not everybody has your, the right intentions at heart. Not everybody is also speaking the truth always. There are all kinds of people around us, some who seem righteous, who aren't, some who aren't righteous, who don't seem righteous, but they are, in fact. So we've got to learn to discern. I've learned to try and, and I hang on to every word spoken, and then when I get, as soon as I get a chance to sit with the Lord and really dive into it, for Him to point it out for me, there are still, I'm still learning to do it in the moment as well, but there are times where I, where I pass that in the moment. You immediately know, wait, this isn't from you, Lord. You, know, you just feel it, man. The Holy Spirit just... Some people get so attuned to the Holy Spirit. It's it's really a path that um, I'm still learning a lot in. And it's great to be there. But we've got to learn that. But you need to get... I got fed up of people telling me what I can't do. That's the thing. Asking a simple question about a, perhaps a next step. And going to righteous men. Going to people who I really believe can give me assistance. Whether they don't come to me, but a question I need to ask. And God always have pinpointed me to people and going, you know what, go ask this person. And I had to sit down and, yes, the answers they gave were valid. But to start my answer off with a negative connotation, that's how I felt about it. And immediately I jump into a way of, you know what, I just asked you, how should I rather brush my teeth? <laughs> that's a very silly, unrelated example. And they just start by going, yeah, but, you know, first there might not be toothpaste in the shop. And I'm going, you know, if they start a ask, if I started like that, that's not what I want to hear. I know it's a very silly example. But try and get what I'm saying. And, and I got fed up with it. And it's... I need people who can help me and tell me what I can do. Yes, the warning should be there and it will come with time. But don't always start your answers and your questions. Or your, don't start your answers off with a negative connotation. You know, warnings are good. But really, as long as it comes from the heart at the end of the day, that's the most important bit. But you set out, my friend, and you do what you can do.